Republican matters. All right. But first, let's go right to House member Lee Zeldin, himself a candidate for New York governor next November. He should be at least slightly hardened about what happened yesterday, last evening, and the chances to stop socialism in Albany might be better a wee bit. Seemingly, we had a little pause in New York City socialism, if I read it right. Mr. Zeldin, Lee, welcome back to the program. Now, it's great to be with you. If I were running for governor, which I certainly am not, but if you are running for governor, um, this was a good outcome last night, was it not? I mean, this is hopeful, was it not? Oh, it would have been really bad for New York City if you had somebody like Maya Wiley getting the nomination. Uh, the person who gets the Democratic nomination is favored for November. That doesn't mean that this race is over. Far from it. I'm sure that there's going to be a spirited general election battle between Eric Adams and Curtis Sliwa to decide the, the future of New York City. And as you look at Eric Adams' lead, yes, it's sizable. Another way of looking at it is there's almost 70 percent uh, of New York City Democratic primary voters who didn't vote for Eric Adams. And you had split tickets amongst people who are supportive of policies like AOC's. But what was good is that, I mean, who would have thought if it was the spring, summer of 2020, and we were talking about what would be the top issue in the New York City Democratic primary, that it would be crime and public safety to support law enforcement more, not less. You have... You have voters in New York, not just Republicans, we're talking about Democrats, too, concerned about rising crime in their neighborhood, the impacts of the cashless bail that was implemented up in Albany. They want to they are getting rid of qualified immunity. And that list goes on. So voters seeing what's happening in their surrounding neighborhoods, fearful for their own safety, uh, concerned about the erosion of education for their kids, for their family, their neighbors, uh, are they, they're speaking up to go in a different direction. So I, am I heartened uh, by the fact that a candidate wins who would hopefully be better than Amaya Wiley on public safety? We'd be better as it relates to education? Yes. Uh, but we still have a whole lot of work to do because this is still Bill de Blasio's New York City. This is still Andrew Cuomo's New York. And so much is going in the wrong direction that every single day people are fleeing New York and they're not looking back they're permanently gone, and they're never coming back. Well, and that's, that's why I'm in this race. I understand. Uh, yes, I want you to be in the race. Um, I think you're going to be a great candidate, and I think you can win. But, you know, I kind of, not only did Maya Wiley lose, the AOC candidate and all the crazy people around her, but Mayor Putz lost. And I think he lost big. He wasn't really even a factor. People stayed away from him. And, I, Lee, I'm looking for little turning points. You know, as a long-suffering New Yorker, we've seen the ups, and I've seen the downs in the city's fortunes, okay? Um, I just think these are good signs. These are good omens. And I guess I'd like to ask you candidly, can you build on this? I mean, suppose Adams turns out to be a law and order cop kind of mayor, for example, you know, with school choice. I don't know where he is on taxes. I don't think he's any kind of supply sider. I'll leave that to, to what you can do in the state. But if you can beat the socialists in the city, can you beat the socialist legislature in Albany and the, you know, growing socialist mentality that has done so much damage to New York? Uh, yes, absolutely. And that's the key. The, the socialists in Albany are pretty much from New York City. Uh, however, when you look upstate New York, all the way out in Buffalo, the incumbent mayor uh, yesterday l is losing a Democratic primary against a self-described socialist. Mm. Uh, so you have these other parts of uh, in Rochester, you had the incumbent mayor losing for many different reasons. Uh, but those are two Democratic mayors in upstate New York who are being unseated. I, you have outsized influence of self-described socialists right now in, in Albany. And hopefully they are watching what happened yesterday inside of New York City and realizing that their policies don't work. These are people who believe that taxes have no effect on behavior. Uh, and they, for their next act, they were looking to increase gas taxes, 55 cents a gallon, increase propane, home heating oil, natural gas. Uh, so what we need to do in order to restore New York to glory is to reduce cost of living, to have more energy options to bring costs down and create jobs, uh, have a, a, a stronger case to be made for businesses to stay here, 
rather than flee, many of them are being decimated. We were just talking about the public safety impacts, the education impacts. We have a corrupt governor who's under countless investigations from the federal, state, local level. I think that yesterday is a warning shot to these socialist right. Democrats who weren't right. up, who aren't up this November, that, uh, that voters, even in their own party, are done with them. That, that's the way I read it. That, I just think that's the key. Your last point there, Lee, I mean, that's what I was thinking last night, and those thoughts held this morning. I don't understand this crazy ranking election, but... I think, you know, politically, even intellectually, the results yesterday in New York City are a vast improvement over what we've been having and what we've been seeing. Now, let me come back to Washington. I thought the defeat with a filibuster that is still strongly entrenched, thankfully, the defeat of S-1 to nationalize elections was another good omen. And, Lee, the strength of the filibuster is a great omen because, you know, if the filibuster went down, then, you know, Katie barred the door on, you know, court packing and open borders and uh, 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 taxes and spending and Green New Deal and every other wacky idea. So S-1 down, filibuster up, that's got to be sort of politically bullish, isn't it? Yeah, we, we need balance right now in our country. We don't have it with, we were just talking about one party rule in New York City, one party rule up in Albany. We have one party rule down in Washington. And this HR1, this S1 that, that passed the House, came up for a vote in the Senate. Uh, this is a federalization of elections where they want to have ballot harvesting all across the country. They want to ban voter ID everywhere in America. They want our tax dollars to be used to fund robocalls of candidates we don't even support, annoying robocalls coming to our own homes. Uh, so this was a bad idea. They called it For the People Act. It really was for the Democratic politicians, for Pelosi, it's for Schumer, it's for their power. This was for the swamp. Uh, and it's the right call. This is for the swamp, actually. You know what I mean? It's a swamp. I mean, that's the, it's funny. I know you're a Trump supporter. Obviously, uh, you know, I was honored to be in uh, president's senior staff. But I don't want to lose that. The, 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 the Trump idea of draining the swamp, which is draining in New York City, at least the city council, or draining in Albany, you follow me? Whereas the Democrats at all three levels, they want through sheer brute political power and force to remake and transform the city, the state, and the whole darn country. And you know what, Lee? I want to improve America. I want to improve the prosperity. I want more people working, and so do you. But I don't want to transform America. I think America's principles, constitutional declaration of independence is just fine. I want to hang on to that stuff. Yeah, amen. And when Republicans had one party rule, it wasn't a Republican party position that the Supreme Court isn't favorable enough to us. So let's just add more judges. Right. I mean, that that thought never crossed anyone's mind because it's it's an absurd, raw power grab. Mm. Uh, and now with the Democrats with, with power upset because they're over the course of the last four years, there have been conservative justices appointed we're looking for all justices, regardless of who appoints you, not to be an activist, just interpret law and our Constitution mm. strictly, be fair, don't advocate. Uh, and we're, we don't advocate for the raw power grab, whether it's Republicans in total control or Democrats in total control. It doesn't matter. We're consistent. Unfortunately, with Democrats, it matters who's in control when they have total power. Now they're talking about packing the court. And, the, and President Biden does not have a mandate to do it because during the campaign last year, his position wasn't that if you elect me, that I right. will pack the court. Right. He actually, to the extent he talked about it, took the opposite position. Well, I'm watching the filibuster thing very carefully. And I think, Lee, I think between Manchin and Cinema, and you've also got Hassan, if I'm pronouncing it right, in New Hampshire, because she may have a tough re-election race. Um, you've got Kelly also in Arizona. Um, I don't think they can beat the filibuster. Democrats cannot beat the filibuster. And I thought Mitch McConnell was magnificent in his Senate floor speech. I don't know if you saw it uh, two days ago. He really laid it out. Anyway, Lee Zeldin, you're the best. I wish you all the best of luck. A glimmer of hope from last night. You know, turning socialism around is going to take some push. <laughs> Rome will not be rebuilt in a day. It's going to take us a while. House member Lee Amen. Zeldin of New York, folks. Anyway, moving on.